David, when are, when are you going to feel like maybe we've put in the lows? Uh, you know, I, I'm not good at timing the bottom here, Kelly, but I, I just think, look, uh, the, the, the saying that counted on the way up, don't fight the Fed, is going to count on the way down. We've got years and years of excess liquidity that we have to unwind. Uh, there's still a lot of really overpriced stocks out there. So we've not seen the end of the pain. Uh, I think we've not seen the sort of end of uh, the speculative bubble popping. Uh, and in the meantime, what investors need to take away from this is that it's time to sharpen your pencils and get back to making sure you invest in real companies with real earnings. You say we have years and years of uh, over hyper liquidity to drain out of the system. Uh, does that suggest that it's going to be years and years of the kind of markets that we've seen over the past six to eight to 12 weeks? You know, Tyler, that, I think that's the million dollar question here. I, I think the Fed has been looking to sort of walk a very fine line. And, and the question is, do we rip off the Band-Aid and see the market sink uh, and plunge the economy into recession? Or do we try to make this a gentle and, gra and gradual unwinding? Uh, never in the history of the world have we been able to make it a gentle and gradual unwinding. So it would be a feat uh, never be before accomplished. And it doesn't appear that uh, after the last couple of days, they're going to be successful in accomplishing that feat uh, this time around either, Tyler. But I think that's what they're going to try to do. And I think that's part of why the Fed took such a gradual dragging their feet approach to addressing inflation. I think the result is that now they're a little behind the curve and the markets are catching up now as the Fed is catching up to being behind the curve on inflation. Cisco, CarMax, and Ford, why those three? <laughs> Mainly because they're cheap and they generate a ton of cash flow. Uh, all of those stocks trade at discounts to their no growth value. Uh, in other words, the stock prices assume that their profits are gonna permanently decline uh, while those companies are generating huge amounts of cash flow and have great growth prospects. Not top line growth prospects like we saw with fancy tech or popular tech stocks where they were growing 20, 30, 40% at the top line uh, and zero at the, at the bottom line. But all of these firms have great prospects. All those firms have great prospects for cash flow growth going forward, while market expectations are for cash flows to permanently decline. Well, that's the theme of this hour, isn't it? Looking for those cash flows. David, thanks so much. We appreciate it.